that's weird. It's a black box. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Next Gen MD. I'm John Luca and thank you so much for checking out another video here today on the channel. Now if you're new to the channel, what we're going to be doing here today, this is actually my third video in the series of how to get into a medical school here in Ontario, where I go over each of the six schools, uh, talk about a few interesting facts about the schools, and then let you know everything you need to know about how you could get into the school um, that you're interested in. So quickly, every time before I start one of these videos, I always begin with a quick disclaimer, letting everyone know that I am just a student, I'm going to be starting off at McMaster Medical School very, very soon, I'm super excited, but I am in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Queen's University. I interviewed there and I know a lot of stuff about the university because of my own experience, uh, but I don't represent them at all. Now the Queen's Medical Program is going to be a four-year medical program where the clerkship is going to start off in the third year. Now every year, Queen's Medical Program gets around 4,800 applicants. I think this year they had just over 4,800 applicants for a final class size of just over 100. So I'm going to go ahead and put the statistics up on the board, but this is definitely going to be one of the very competitive medical schools to get into to just based off of their class size alone. And in terms of Ontario, there's only one other school, that's the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, that has a smaller class size than Queen's University. Now after speaking with a few former graduates of the Queen's University medical program, and actually one of my uh, biggest mentors came from Queen's University and he's now a doctor, um, one of the things that they seem to say about these smaller class sizes is that as a result of less people being enrolled in the program, you're actually able to form very tight-knit communities with both uh, the other students in the program and then you get to know the educators on a very personal level, which is always something that's going to be a benefit when you're in medical school because a lot of the learning that you're going to do is from the experiences of other people that have been around for longer than you have. Now the Queen's Medical Program is actually affiliated with three major hospitals down in the in the Kingston area and uh, the southeastern Ontario area. And that is the Kingston General Hospital, which is located very close to campus. You could actually see it when you're walking around from the Queen's campus. Uh, then there's the Providence Healthcare System. Uh, and then finally, there's the Hotel Dieu. So those, like the UHN, are going to be the three main hospitals that are associated with um, Queen's University. Now for the um, the black box. So for those of you that don't know, I've never heard of that expression for the Queen's Medical School before. For people in the past who have applied to Queen's Medical School or who are thinking of applying to Queen's Medical School, uh, one of the nicknames that the school has gotten on forums and among students is this black box. And the reason being is because unfortunately, Queen's doesn't publish much information regarding their MCAT cutoffs, their GPA cutoffs, or things of that nature. And, and you know, when we go ahead and do these videos, normally I like to keep things as factual as possible, and we're still going to do so. Uh, however, because they don't publish anything like GPA minimums, for example, we're just going to have to go ahead and follow the step-by-step -step guide that Queen's University has outlined on their website regarding how you could go ahead and get into the university. Now there are six steps that you uh, are going to progress through when applying to the Queen's Medical School and these steps are going to be sequential. So basically, you're going to start off with step one and if you're successful in making it through step one, you'll move on to step two and then step three and then step four all the way until you've gotten into the Queen's Medical School. And so the very first step is going to be the GPA cutoff part. Now, the GPA is going to be used twice when it comes to the steps uh, of getting into the school, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, on step one, basically what's going to happen is that depending on the, uh, the strength of the applicant pool for that year, Queen's University is going to assign a GPA cutoff that each of their applicants is going to have to meet in order to progress to step two. Uh, what Queen's is going to do is actually come up with two GPA calculations for every single applicant. Now that's going to be the C GPA uh, that the applicant's gotten, and then also their two-year GPA. Now for the C GPA, um, it's just basically a summary of all the courses that you've taken throughout all of undergrad. Uh, however, for the two-year GPA, it's just going to take into account the last two years of study. So if I was in my fourth year, uh, and I would completed fourth year, and then I had applied the next cycle, then um, the Queen's two-year GPA is going to be made up of my third year grades, and then my fourth year grades, whereas my C GPA is going to be the entire thing. And we actually don't know the cutoffs and 
Queen says that it's possible that they change every single year depending on the applicants. Uh, however, what we do know is that Queen's does say that they will go ahead and use the stronger of your two GPAs. So personally for me, my C GPA when I applied to Queen's was a 3.63. However, my two year GPA was a 3.78 and that's based on my, my last two years of study. Now there's a lot of speculation that goes on among students and then again on, on internet forums and things like that as to what the GPA cutoff is. And for a long time, it's been rumored to be around a 3.8 and then for that reason a lot of times people would tell other people not to apply unless one of your two GPA calculations were above a 3.8. Uh, however, in my case, even as an undergraduate applicant, you see that I got an interview this year with a 3.78. So my final recommendation regarding the GPA for everyone is to just go ahead and apply. If your GPA, one of the two calculations, is above a 3.7, then it's always worth that shot and I'm going to go ahead and say um, that you should definitely consider applying. Now, once you've gone ahead and met the GPA cutoff, you are then going to progress to the whole, so it's the step two, which is the MCAT cutoff step. So in the MCAT cutoff step, there's going to be two parts. There's going to be first, you need to meet the overall MCAT score that Queens has decided to set for their cutoff for that year. And then you have to meet the individual cutoffs in every single section. So let's say, for example, we have one applicant who went ahead and had an amazing GPA, and then they wrote the MCAT and they scored a 520 which is a fantastic score if we look at it at face value. However, if we go down and break down this applicant's individual scores, um, then we're gonna see that it seems as though that this applicant would be ineligible to make it through the MCAT step. However, if we were to compare this to a second applicant now who had an amazing GPA still, or was able to meet the cutoff, and then scored a 512 on the MCAT, once again, a very respectable score. However, in this case, we see that this applicant is going to have a 128 in each of the four sections. Now, in this case, even though the first applicant had a stronger overall MCAT score than the second one, um, the second applicant is going to be more uh, competitive in terms of applying to Queen's University because each of the sections are going to be higher as a whole and therefore this applicant has a better chance of meeting all of the individual cutoffs. Now assuming you've made the GPA and the MCAT cutoffs, and again Queen's is not going to tell you whether or not this was the case, you are then going to progress to the third step which is the review of the autobiographical sketch and then also your references. Now Queen's goes ahead and sets their their cutoffs so that 2,000 people will progress to this step. So in other words, because 4,800 applicants is such a big number of applications, it would actually take Queens like way too long to go through every single one of them uh, and read all the autobiographical sketches and references and things like that. So they want to go ahead and have these initial screening factors before they go ahead and invest the time to go and read through everyone's references. Now, for the review of the autobiographical sketch, Queen's is going to look at the six different categories that is going to be outlined by OMSAS and that you're going to have to go ahead and fill out when you apply. Now, these six categories are going to be your employment, your extracurriculars, your volunteer activities, your awards and accomplishment, your research, and then your other. Now, Queen says that they're going to go ahead and look at each of these six categories like individually, and then they're also going to treat them all equally. They're all weighted equally. So therefore, uh, let's say someone has a lot of research. They've done a lot of research with their school, uh, maybe outside of their school, but they've never really had anything in terms of extracurricular experiences. Therefore, they might have a very, very strong score in one section and a very low section in another. It's always my recommendation that when we're filling these things out, to go ahead and equally place um, all of these great activities around uh, and spread them so that they cover all of the different categories. Now just like I covered in my U of T video, all of the, uh, the schools that go with OMSAS and all of the Ontario medical schools want you to go ahead and outline experiences that are in relation with their can meds uh, roles that we've talked about before. Now as soon as I get around to it, I'm going to go ahead and make a video on all the different parts of the ABS and what I think a strong autobiographical sketch would look like. Uh, however, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and list some of the activities that were on mine uh, because I think that as a whole I was able to do a good job incorporating some of the can meds rules. So for my employment section, I actually put that um, I had been working for three years with the city of Vaughan as a standard first aid instructor. And then uh, for my extracurricular section, uh, I went and put that I was a big part of the Movember charity. I've actually been doing Movember for uh, a long time now, maybe about seven years. So you're going to see some videos like that in the future. Um, and then for my volunteer activities, I spent three years with a charity called Camp Aaron, uh, which was a grief, uh, grief camp for children. And then for the awards and accomplishments section, I went ahead and I put down 
on my MSA Volunteer Award that I won by working with the Princess Margaret Hospital. And then for the research section, I went ahead and I applied um, my thesis project for this section. So I had actually been working on a thesis project with Ryerson University. Now at the time of my application, I had only been working on this research project, this thesis project, for about three months. And I had to reflect that in my application. However, the point I'm trying to make here is that if you have any research at all, go ahead and put it in this section because Queen's is going to look at all of the sections equally and you always want to make sure that you have something in the sections if that's possible. Um, and then finally for the other section I put down uh, my experience running the Tough Mudder obstacle uh, course and I actually do Tough Mudder every single year uh, and it was something that I was able to talk about in my own ABS. When I was trying to go ahead and apply I thought that I would focus on two main parts of my ABS and that was really making sure that I included experiences that met the CanMeds role and I'm going to go ahead and put them back up on the screen now. Um, but then also, I really thought that it was one of the most important things that I could do to outline as much diversity in my experiences as possible. Now personally, I think that one of the most important things to remember when it comes to being a physician, especially in a country here like Canada, is that the patient populations that you're going to be working with are so diverse. Right? We have people coming from all different backgrounds and different places. Now if you've only gone ahead and worked in one particular field your entire life, um, personally I think that you should probably diversify and look in, into different things and do different things so that you can better relate to patients from all different sources. Now for your references, OMSAS says that you're going to need one academic reference, one non-academic re reference, and then one reference of your choosing. Now I would go ahead and make sure that we stay in line with their request as much as possible, um, because if we go ahead and deviate, there's always the chance that that's not what they're looking for. So personally, I went ahead and I chose uh, one of my professors that I had known for a really long time, um, one of the head pharmacists that I worked at at Princess Margaret, and then finally one of the children's grief counselors that I had worked with at Camp Barron. Guys, yeah, just one more, you know, PSA, public service announcement. Please do not fall into the trap of choosing your references based off of, you know, the prestige associated with that person. You want references that are going to be strong from people who know you and genuinely like you and want you to succeed. If you've gone ahead and met a professor uh, just, you know, for the second half of, of one semester because you didn't actually talk much in the first half of the semester, this might not be the strongest choice when it comes to choosing someone as your referee. Now for step four. So to the 2,000 applicants that were able to progress to step three, uh, which was basically kind of like the full file review, during step four, what's going to happen is that the university is going to go ahead and rank the applicants um, from you know 2,000 all the way to the number one applicant on paper. Now even though the GPA and the MCAT were previously used as kind of like cutoff points, right? At this part, at step four, they're also going to be used again in order to rank the applicants. So basically, if you have a stronger either two-year or CGPA, that's going to go ahead and grant you some more uh, competitive points over another applicant that, that's competing against you, right? And similarly, if you were able to meet the MCAT cutoff, um, that's one thing, but then to go ahead and have a better MCAT, that's going to help you to kind of gain an edge on some of the other applicants as well. And once again, at this step, they're also going to heavily value things like the extracurriculars, the ABS, right, and the references. Now, Queens doesn't go ahead and um, state how they're going to go and weight each of these different categories. However, what they do say is that once they've gone ahead and tallied everyone's scores together and they've gone ahead and um, arranged kind of like the order from, you know, number one to number two, they're going to go ahead and invite the top 500 applicants uh, in for an interview. Now that brings me to step five. So for step five, this is going to be our, our interviews for the Queen's Medical School. Now interview invites, like all the other schools, are going to go out uh, sometime in January. And then the interviews, for the most part, are going to be a, a little bit later on. Mine was actually in March. And the interviews are going to be conducted at the Queen's campus in Kingston, Ontario. Now, as far as the Queen's interview process goes, okay, they're actually going to be very unique in that they use both uh, you know, the MMI and they use a panel interview. It's actually both. So it was one of my, uh, my longer interview experiences. And, and actually, it was my first medical school interview ever. So, I mean, looking back at it, I had a fantastic time at the Queen's interview. Um, you know, I, I prepared for them as much as I, as I could. Uh, but, you know, looking back, I just feel like 
I just got so nervous on the day of, uh, even though I was super ready. And I, I know the type of person that I am, right? I'm, I'm very personable and I'm very friendly and I like to have conversations with people. But for whatever reason, when I showed up that day uh, and I was walking to the campus, just kind of the gravity of the situation hit me all at once. And I think that I didn't give Queens uh, my own personal best representation of myself. Because, you know, there's really no shame in giving an interview your best shot and then not making it into the school, right? Like the applicant, the applicants that are going to be there on interview day are some of the best of the best. And honestly, myself personally, if I got beaten by someone who was at the end of the day just better than me, I really can't go ahead and be mad about that. But where you really start to beat yourself up is when you look back at interview day and see all the little flaws that you knew you could have handled a little bit differently, okay? So make sure that you prepare for the interview and then just be genuine, be confident, and be uh, friendly. Like, like enjoy the day as much as you can. And then finally, for, for step six, the final step, which is the decision, the ultimate decision as to whether or not you got into Queen's Medical School. So once again, Queen's does have one of the smallest class sizes. So on decision day, which is going to be sometime in May, it's a long waiting process before then, uh, they're going to go ahead and offer uh, initial offers for people, then they're going to go ahead and make a wait list, and then finally they're going to go ahead and reject some people. Now, interestingly, like Queen's actually goes and, and puts down a little bit of information on how they make their final decision. And as it turns out, um, the GPA and the MCAT portions of your application are dropped when, it, when Nana just walked in on me talking to a camera. Nana, <laughs> I'm trying to film a TV video. <laughs> oh, what kind of news talking? <laughs> Queen's University actually does go ahead and put some information on their website regarding how they make their final decisions. Now as it turns out, the MCAT and the GPA components of your original application are basically thrown out after the interview uh, step, right? And then after that, it's basically just your interview score that you got from interview day, and then it's going to be your uh, letters of reference, and then finally it's going to be the score from your autobiographical sketch. Now there is no kind of like breakdown in terms of uh, how much each of these three parts uh, account for in the final decision. However, I would go ahead and put a heavy, heavy emphasis. I am very confident in saying that the interview is definitely going to be a key component of who eventually makes it into the Queen's Medical School. And guys, that's, uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to everything that you need to know for getting into the Queen's Medical School. Now, if you go on their website, there's going to be additional information about special cases for applicants and, and the actual um, little details of all the GPA calculations and things like that, so please feel free to do so. And I'm, I'm really sorry that this video was actually just a little bit late. I was working full-time this last week uh, down on my job, so I got a little bit uh, distracted when it came to doing the whole YouTube thing. However, for the next week, I actually went ahead and took the entire thing off because medical school is just around the corner so I'm gonna try my best to film as many videos as possible next week I got a whole bunch of ideas really cooking up here and you guys have given me some great ideas uh, as well so stay tuned and we'll see you next time on my channel okay so everyone have a great day and um, take it easy